And uh, we were talking about the Super Tuesday last night and subsequently Nikki Haley withdrew. Uh, it's, an, it's an open, clear run now for Donald Trump to get to the Republican nomination as if that was ever in doubt. Here's a little mm. bit from Nikki Haley. I am filled with the gratitude for the outpouring of support we've received from all across our great country. But the time has now come to suspend my campaign. I said I wanted Americans to have their voices heard. I have done that. I have no regrets. Mark, she obviously wanted very few Americans to have their voices heard. She's just... Yeah, the thing about American politics, it's the big show. And my boy, mm. my boy Trump, he is, he's the big show. He's entertaining. I don't think anyone <laughs> is sad to see the back of Nikki Haley. She is like, only maybe Raytheon and BlackRock and all of the, you know, Pfizer, all the big corporate sponsors. But, you know, no one is, is sad to see her go. She's so un unentertaining. She sounds like a halt message. That's her voice there. It's like, hello, America. Very good. It's so call. whiny and boring. I'm glad to see her go on. <laughs> Tell us what you really think. I want to get your thoughts on the contest too, Tim. But first up, have a look at this bit of polling analysis from, of all places, MSNBC. Have a look. If you're looking at the primaries and saying, boy, there's all evidence here of Republicans turning on Trump, unwilling to vote for Trump in the fall, you're not seeing it in the general election polling in these Trump numbers. 97% of folks who said they voted for Trump in 2020 say in this poll they're still with Trump, but only 85% of Joe Biden's 2020 voters say they're with him. Yeah, so even on lefty MSNBC, they're saying that uh, the Republican vote uh, for Trump is probably going to be stronger than the wavering vote for Biden on the Democrat side. It just underscores my view, Tim. They just can't run Biden, and they won't. They'll have a convention and, and then nominate someone else. They'll grab anybody. Uh, what's that? Who's that bloke from being there? Chauncey Gardner. He'd do a better <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just first on uh, on Nikki Haley, I think she might have. She she said that she had no regrets. You know, apart from losing, you'd assume <laughs> she regrets losing to Donald Trump a yeah. whole lot. That will that will be a, a major <laughs> lifetime regret. Yeah, you know, just just to clarify on her behalf. But yeah, like, I think what we're seeing here as well is, uh, as in Australia, people hate pylons. They hate it when uh, when a, a when dominant figures are able to push people around and uh, and it's backfiring, I think. I think all the legal, all the media, all the social media attacks on Trump have massively backfired. They've actually uh, made his support uh, more committed and more solid. And as we're seeing now in the numbers, even stupid MSNBC can't really weevil, weasel away out of it, can they? Yeah, they can't ignore it. Mark, uh, you've become our resident animal welfare expert after your uh, exploits uh, wrestling with kangaroos. <laughs> What do you think of Virgin yeah. allowing people to take their pets on planes? I've got to say, I say this has happened to me in the US <laughs> before. Someone gets in the seat next year with a bloody dog. That's the last thing I want to see up there. Yeah, yeah. So, look, at first I was OK with it. Like the, the, As long as no one brings kangaroos on board, Chris, I'm OK. <laughs> um, I think I'll be pretty bloody safe. But and I liked the idea. I was like, that could be cool. I could take my dog on board. That'd be sick. But it's, it's only for little dogs. You know, my dog's like 27 kilos, he's big. You, you, I looked into this. You, you've got to take him in this little carrier. No. You've got to fit underneath your seat. Mm. Like, it's almost more cruel for the dog. Like, they treat us <laughs> like animals as it is. So I wouldn't want to put a dog through yeah. that anyway. The dog you know, probably the, virgin stinks. It's going the, to stink even more. The dog probably wouldn't even <laughs> eat the food they tried to feed him. It did remind me, though, Tim, <laughs> of, a, of a film I've heard about but never seen. Here's a clip of that. Mm. security scenarios we ran. We smack in the middle of what we didn't think of. Can anybody hear me? Let's go! Yeah, snakes on planes. <laughs> you take your dogs and cats, but no snakes, thanks. What if they're pets? You exactly. Know, I know people who've got pet snakes and, uh, you know, give it a go. But, you know, I'd say to Mark, you know, Maybe it's part of the fun and the challenge of pet ownership. Try to fit that 27 kilos of dog into a three kilo space. If there's a poodle there, making too much if noise. If that's what they're telling yeah. you to do, you know, hey, yeah. you if know the, who are we to, to insult the aircraft authorities? They're our bosses. Yeah. If, yeah. The poodles, <laughs> if the poodle's making too much noise in 1B, send the anaconda down there and uh, you'll sort it out. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, guys. We'll catch you next week.